All right, today I've just been sent Moondrop's Darksaber, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit worried. Almost as worried as I am about the mess in my room, which, um, you know, this is... That's fine. And this is fine, maybe. I'm not entirely sure, I just got it. Reviews haven't been, uh, very kind to it. But, uh, let, let's check it out. Now, in typical Moondrop fashion, we get a waifu. That's always a good start, but, you know, a waifu isn't everything, and that's very important. I mean, I guess for some of you guys it is, but that's not the point. So, let's just uh, take a look inside this box right now. And, uh, yeah, so far, it looks good. Looks like the last person packed it upside down, but that's okay. Hopefully, it's gonna be a-okay. Oh yeah, we're A-OK. -okay. Anyway, what you're gonna get are the IEMs, a carrying case, which uh, should inside contain all our other stuff. So, yep, there is our cables, our ear tips, and uh, individual pouches for your IEMs inside the carrying case to keep them protected from, I guess, scratching each other a bit because they do have little panel things. And other than that, you're just gonna get a whole bunch of different paperworks and whatnot with a waifu. I don't know if this is the same one, but it appears to be so. That's the classic pink one that you always find with Moondrop stuff. Now, something I did forget to mention was inside the bag of ear tips. I did find interesting sets of ear tips, which I will be trying, and I guess I'll talk about these more than these standard ones. And of course, interestingly, you also get, you know, an airplane adapter in case you'll be using these on an airplane for some reason. Right now the cable you're gonna get is a two pin connector cable and it's one of Moondrop's nicer cables. Doesn't feel too heavy but I can imagine there being some weight because it is very nicely braided and whatnot. It does have like the little like modular cable end in case you want to change your jack from like a 3.5 millimeter cable into a 4.4 millimeter cable jack that it does come with. It's uh, one of those ones where you unscrew it and you know plug it in, unplug it and whatnot, and it does have a direction it's supposed to be with a little notch, so make sure to align it properly when you're uh, putting it together and whatnot, so that's important, otherwise it's not gonna plug in right, and it's a little fussy because I'm looking off camera to do this. Anyway, moving up, we have a decent splitter and just an okay chin slider, and you know, standard fare ear hooks and two pin connectors so yeah and now is like the main point of concern themselves which is the IEMs themselves and it's not like just the whole thing as much as the body and build of it because the first thing I noticed when I picked these things up was that they're super light and it has to do with the materials and of course the build so the faceplates are not metal they're of like this pressurized carbon heavily layered whatever stuff fancy almost like carbon fiber but basically it's like the fancy stuff you see uh, being used in watches according to their website and it is nice it's got this cool like many textured grain kind of look to it almost like wood kind of like best car steel which is probably why these things are called the dark saber but another point of contention that i know people have which is probably why everything has lower views and according to what i've read is how thin this shell is normally moondrop will like have pretty thick resin shells these are very thin very see-through doesn't uh, inspire a lot of confidence because of how light it is and that's where everyone's concern is and uh yeah I don't, i'm not too confident either but i'd have to use them over a long period of time and see if they'll like die on me but i can't do that because these are you know review units so things that are light sometimes don't exactly have the most confidence um in you know i usually don't feel very confident holding things that are super light on the bright side if you look inside these guys because of how clearly done it is it is very well thought out well neatly laid out i've seen transparent iams before and they look like a mess with not much in there this one looks like it's been thought out and i will say it's not really cheap to do the, these tunnels for like the audio so there is that so these weren't cheap by any means to like design but the lightness of them and the thinness of the walls does make them feel cheap especially compared to like moondrop's other offerings design wise you know it does seem to take after the moondrop blessings three in terms of its shape and whatnot but not the build I did like the build of the threes more but my main concern for these guys is more on the sound side of course but i can't ignore or deny the fact that these guys i don't know i i wish they were denser more thick like the, the other offerings now before we get to comfort i do want to talk about the tightness of like the uh, the connectors to the iam themselves because that seems to be a source of concern though i think it's more of a concern because of the build of these guys versus anything else a lot of moon drops iams seem to have very tight tolerances for the cables to IEMs but for the case of this guy it man it does feel a little concerning so you know I can see where the worry comes from but uh, that aside you know let's talk about the comfort all right now with having it in my ears for a while I think they're pretty okay in terms of comfort it's nothing crazy but I do think they're more comfortable than say like their variations and like some of their heavier IEMs which makes sense because of how light these guys are and a lot of the fit and comfort does come down to like the earbuds I'm using like the well not the earbuds but the ear tips which I'm using the, the clear ones these things can kind of feel grippy and I kind of do like that I don't know if they need to be that grippy considering how light these guys are though it does really make me feel how heavy the cable is in comparison so that's sort of an interesting experience but yeah comfort's okay they look nice which is good but uh yeah i will say the lightness while a concern in terms of build was kind of nice for comfort 
But, you know, that aside, let's get to sound. Mind you, I'll be looking at, like, sound from a more gaming perspective, but I guess I can delve into a little bit of the musicality a bit, which is important. Now, after testing these guys for a while, um, it has become clear to me that the sound is very familiar. As a matter of fact, I can honestly say that these are essentially a direct upgrade to the Moondrop Blessing 3. You'd think, like, the design of the IMs themselves would have hinted that to me because physically, in terms of, like, how they look, it's very similar. But at the same time, you know, I didn't think the sound would be similar, but they actually are. Take the sound of the Moondrop Blessing Blessing 3, which is kind of like neutral-ish, with some warmth to it, warm-leaning, neutral-ish kind of sound, and uh, add some drugs to it to like pump it up a bit, so you have like more details in the mids and highs, and a larger soundstage, and you got the dark saber essentially. I even decided to compare these to like my personal favorites, which are the variations, which you probably have known if you watch all my other videos, and uh, these aren't necessarily an upgrade, despite being you know more expensive than the variations, which set around like I think 520, and these are 800, so that's quite a bit more money. They're more of a side great compared to variations because the variations lean more on the dark end of the spectrum not super dark but definitely darker than these guys ironic just you know because these are called the dark saber but that's beside the point point is you know there's my bias i prefer darker sounds and that's okay everyone has preferences anyway things i did notice because of this with the dark sound on like you know the variations i would say the detail retrieval wasn't quite nearly as good as it was on the dark sabers the dark sabers while still giving you a decent amount of bass i think they gave a much better representation of detail detail in the mids and the highs. That's where these things excelled without like, you know, losing too much on the bass. Maybe some on like the very deep, super low end, which it does reach, is just not as prominent as I would personally prefer it. But I think this sound would be very likable to like most people out there, especially like, you know, audiophiles who want a little bit more life in their sound. Now with everything we've discussed about this, like sonically, you'd expect them to be very good for competitive shooter games, in which case it is not the best. It does an okay job. And that's, you know, it's where the cookie crumbles when it, you apply these for gaming. It's because while you do get a lot of detail retrieval, it's really good at tracking those sounds that you're tracking for in competitive shooters, like footsteps and whatnot, the crunching of the feet are on different surfaces, it's got a good detail in the mids and highs, it's got a wide soundstage, a large soundstage for an IM, mind you, so it'll be kind of smallish, but for an IM, really large soundstage. I, there is some trouble with a soundstage in terms of its verticality. These things don't have a lot of height. So while they are very accurate and they have really good precision with the imagery from like a horizontal plane, it starts to struggle a bit once you add height to the equation. So if you're hunting for somebody and they're say maybe a floor above you or like just below you, that's where these things have a little bit of trouble trying to like give you that sound information. The variations that I have give you a better idea of where things are on a vertical plane versus the dark sabers. On the other hand, the dark sabers give you a better idea of where things are on a horizontal plane and bring it to your attention far better than the more lax sound of the, the, the variations. So yeah, considering the not so great height on the dark sabers, I wouldn't say they're ideal for competitive shooter games, and they only just do an okay job. On the flip side, when it comes to like non-competitive stuff, I think the sound did a pretty good job. It just gives you a very good, detailed, immersive sound. The sound stage is very large for that beautiful uh, immersion in the game, so that's good. However, once you reach things that have some verticality to them, say like we're on a mountain and there's waterfalls and whatnot, I suppose it's not quite nearly as good as some other IMs out there, so there is that so I think when it comes to games I actually wouldn't recommend the dark sabers the dark sabers are very expensive they're hundred dollars but herein lies the issue they're not targeted for gamers they're for audiophiles and that's where things get like very complicated being an audiophile product only an audiophile can justify the price of 800 bucks for a set of IEMs like so heck uh, the same goes for like I guess the variations if I'm be totally honest but that's just kind of the audiophile world so these IEMs are not for someone who is a gamer first and an audiophile second Second. These things are for maybe someone who is an audiophile first and a gamer second, but even then, I don't know if I can fully recommend them because it really comes down to your taste in sound. For most people who are like into gaming first, I wouldn't get these guys. I would grab something like if you want to really go out there. Blessings 3, or anything currently from, um, like, Tigerism, because they will sound really good for music and games. Heck, you could even go for the Starfield 2 or the Aria 2, because both of those are also really good for the price. So, for those of you who are mostly gamers, I know most of you guys aren't going to spend 800 bucks on IEM. Let's be honest here. And for those of you guys who are, like, audiophiles, who also play a lot of games when I use one single set for everything, I don't know if I can recommend the Dark Sabers unless you really like the sound profile. You'd have to try them yourself. You know how it goes. But for me, what I think about it, I think there are 
better choices if you're going to also be using these for gaming i would have a different set for gaming but if you're going to be using this for music and this is the kind of sound you like for music then yeah sure go ahead but i can't ignore the issues that people have pointed out in which case the sound upgrades say from like the variation or even the uh, moondrop s8 isn't really significant to the point where you can even call it an upgrade as much as a side raid because it comes down to sound profiling and whatnot but the biggest point of contention that most people have is 100% the build. Because <laughs> honestly, these things don't inspire the most confidence, and I can see why. But these things are fairly new, so only time will tell. For me, personally, I'm also not a big fan. I wish they used more of that filled-in resin to make it, like, more solid. But in my use of them, I can't deny that the lightweight feel in my ear was kind of nice. So hopefully, like, in the long run, we'll find out that this lightweight build is actually solid, but if not, that's unfortunate. <laughs> so for the time being, I'm not a really big fan of the build until I am proven otherwise that this is actually solid, in which case I'd be okay with it, because I do like that it's light. Anyway, that's enough rambling about these guys. I think you guys got the idea right at this point. So um, if you do want to buy them, I'll leave a link in the description. It is an affiliate link. Okay keep me alive a little bit longer because you know i need money to survive and yeah that's just, just a link down there you buy from there i get a slight kickback and uh if you don't want to buy well you know there you go that's my whole opinions on these things and whether you want them or not it's totally up to you at this point so uh yeah i guess i'll see you guys next time